Every tutorial about Git is over complicated. When I was in college, I only asked my professors for one thing, to teach me as if I were 5 years old, without all those complicated and unnecessary definitions. That's exactly why I'm recording this Git tutorial for beginners, because as you will see soon, Git isn't really that complicated. And honestly, I haven't seen a single project that didn't use it. So let's get started, and in return, please hit the subscribe button. It will help me a lot, and you don't miss out future videos about programming and DevOps. So what is Git? Let's start with the basics. Git and GitHub are not the same. If you're on Linux or Mac, it is possible that you already have Git installed. If you're on Windows, you will need to install it from official Git page. So, what is actually Git for? Think of it like a memory card or a save point in video game. But for your code, when you write code, you don't want to lose your progress, just like in a game. You want to be able to save and reload. With Git, every time you hit a save point, you're making sure you can go back if something breaks. Everything happens locally on your computer, and no one else can have access to it, unless you share it. Imagine you've got a folder called My Own Dollar Code, with files like Program.py and Settings.yaml. If one of those files gets deleted and you didn't save it, it's gone forever. Or if you break something in your code last week and just notice it, it will be really hard to roll back to working code, unless you're creating a backup of a folder each time you have changed something which is actually a pretty good analogy for how Git works. To use Git, you just need a few basic commands. They are simple and we will focus only on those two days. The first one is initializing project. So open your terminal, for example, cmd or nabirusl, and type git in it. This sets up git in your local folder. It's like putting a memory card in your console. Without it, you can't make saves. Now let's create two files index.html and app.css and check git status. You can see that those files are not tracked. To start tracking them, we will use git add and the name of the file. Or if you want to add everything at once, what you will do 95% of the time, just type git add and dot. Then you can commit, which means actually saving the changes. So type git commit minus m and the message. That message is important. It's like a note for your future self about what you just saved. If you later add a script.js, you had to repeat the same steps. So git add and git commit. Want to see your code history? Git log. This shows every save point with a date, time and unique code. This is just a hash. If you want to undo something, you can use git revert and the hash. And just like that, you create new commit that removes changes from the one you reverted. So you just roll back to previous version. Now, here where it gets a little bit more advanced. By default, your code is on a master branch. Think of it like a, the main path, but sometimes you want to try something new without messing up with the main code. So for example, create a new future. So you create a branch with the command git branch minus b and the branch name. Now you've got a copy of the project to play with. You can add files, commit changes, and nothing will break on the master branch. So let's create the test file remove the CSS file and commit changes. As you can see on the master branch, the CSS file is still present because changes on the branch doesn't affect the other branches. Later, if you like what you did, you can merge those changes with the main branch by using git merge command. So go to the main branch and run git merge with the branch name to be merged. Then you can delete this branch by running git branch minus D and the name of branch to delete it. Ok, so Git is on your computer, but GitHub is an online platform. Think of it like a Google Drive, but for your Git repository. You can push your code to GitHub and other users can see it, download it and collaborate with you. There are other platforms like GitLab or Bitbucket, but GitHub is the most popular one. So how do you push your code to GitHub repository? Step 1. Create a GitHub account. Then make a repository, basically a folder. Once you have that, GitHub will give you instructions usually something like git remote at origin and the repo link and git push origin master. You will need to log in with your github username and use a personal access token instead of password. So generate it by going to the profile settings, developer settings, personal access token and create it. But remember to not share this access token with anyone because using this token someone can access your account and break something. Once that's set up, your code is online. Whenever there are changes in GitHub that you don't have locally, you can download it by using git pull command, git pull origin master. And if you make changes locally, you can push them to the remote repository 
with the git push command. So git push origin master. That's how you keep your local code and the GitHub in sync. You can also push branches, create pull requests and collaborate with other users. And that's it for the basics. Here's all you really need to remember. That's more than enough to get started. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out the future programming and DevOps tutorials. As a bonus, here are the plugins for Visual Studio Code to see Git history and branches. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.